Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I get to speak with Dr. Liz Lister about things that are important for our health and well-being. Being. Yes, yes. Everything we talk about with you, Dr. Liz, turns out to be extremely important for our health mm. and well-being. Appreciate it. Um, I want to take you back a little bit. I can't. I, I was just listening to one of her older videos. I, I'm sorry, I don't remember what it was about. But the phrase pelvic floor mm. um, came out. And I wanted yes. to ask you about the, our pelvic floor. Um, wh whatever this video was, it, it, it just, what struck me was the, the, I didn't know I had a floor in my pelvis. That's, I guess, where I'm going with it. And it, That's right. it must be men and women both have pelvic floors, right? T tell me that about is correct. that. Absolutely. We're delighted. All right. Well, first, let me ask you both. You've seen skeleton and you've seen the pelvis, right? Yeah. Have you both yeah. seen that before? Okay. So it looks like one round bony structure, right? Looks like one pelvis. Sure. It's actually, it's actually two halves and bound together. So in the back, they connect to the spine with yep. ligaments. And yep. in the front, the pubic bones connect to each other with ligaments. Okay. Right? And so, so you've got these this bony structure connected with ligaments that can stretch, all right? That is how women have babies. And then, so now let's picture it like the basket. It's the top of the basket. And you, if you look down inside it, you're going to see muscles that literally interweave, just like interweaving my fingers. Oh, and okay. that, forms, that forms the pelvic floor. Oh. So now there's got to be lots of stuff down there, particularly the urinary tract, right? That's correct. And of that course, correct. the, the vagina is down there. That's correct. So all of this, yeah. does this mean pelvic floors are more important to women, but more problematic for women than men? Yes, and here's why. So you said it correctly in the front, going through, passing through here. In the right. front is the urethra. This is both men and women. In the back is the rectum, right. both men and women. And for women, in between the vagina. So sure. men have only the urethra and the rectum. Women have the urethra, the rectum, and between the vagina. Yeah. Right. For example, childbirth, all the hormone changes of pregnancy allow those ligaments to relax. It allows the muscles to relax. And you've got this baby... I uh, hope it's not too big, uh, but it's going to pass through this area so that it's designed to accommodate that. However, yeah. you can imagine the stretching involved. Oh, sure. We, we, we've right? all heard our wives tell us about it. Thank you. It, that's right. <laughs> exactly. That's right. And so it's also designed to mostly go back to how it used to be, never 100%. But as close as possible. And there are things that we can do. So, for example, if there's relaxation of the pelvic floor, some of those structures that we were just talking about can they can drop. Start by saying that word. First, things can drop down. Again, this is definitely more common in women than in men. It does not require childbirth. So one out of ten women who've never had a baby will experience relaxation of these muscles and dropping of the organs, bladder, the vagina, and sometimes the rectum. And so sometimes those structures can protrude outwards. It can be anywhere from very mild and not really a bother. And if, but if it's not treated and it's not evaluated and the woman doesn't do anything to try to help put things back up into their place, she can have a complete uh, prolapse. Oh. Sometimes the bladder can prolapse, the vagina, sometimes the uterus, which is, of course, at the top of the vagina, it can prolapse and sometimes even protrude. Yeah. We, you know, they tell crazy stories in our training programs. And one of the stories was a woman who her prolapse had developed to such a horrible degree. Uh, and I can't remember the reason with this particular woman, why it got to that point, but she only came in to get help when she could no longer put on her pantyhose. Oh boy. Because she had her uterus falling down. Yeah. Right? So this is the kind of 
uh, pelvic floor, sometimes damage, sometimes stretching, uh, but overall we use the word relaxation and can lead to these other types of issues. Well, it does mm -hmm. sound like the prolapse would be the extreme uh, yes. negative reaction uh, to a, a relaxed, relaxed pelvic floor. How common yes. is a relaxed pelvic floor? How common is it a problem, I guess? Okay, so it's definitely very common. It is also very common in women after childbirth. There's other mm -hmm. reasons, other issues that can lead to pelvic floor relaxation. So think about anything that is chronically stressing these muscles. For And, and this could be men as well in women, anything that's causing chronic constipation, and if people are straining to be able to have a bowel movement, yeah. that is going to put pressure on those muscles. It's going to stretch them out. Uh, other types of uh, issues can include being overweight to the point where uh, it puts a stress and strain on those internal structures. So that can happen as well. If there's a lot of visceral fat internally, that can be part of the problem as well. So is there preventative um, uh, routines that people can, in general, obviously, you know, if you're obese, lose some weight and things like that. But are there either foods uh, that, uh, like, like in the case of bone density, I guess vitamin D and sunshine is good for that and exercise. Are there things that, are similar in uh, in the world of of uh, pelvic floor health. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and I'm going to address that. And let me mention one really common problem that women can have, and that will be urinary incontinence. That's going to be less common for men, usually because there's just less stressor on those pelvic floor muscles. Uh, but for women, even mild pelvic relaxation can cause uh, because those muscles are constricting structures. So it's helping control the urine flow, sure. right? So sometimes urinary incontinence can happen more in women, but definitely that also happen in men. Strengthening, anything that strengthens the muscles in general is going to help. Uh, there are also specific exercises. Most women have heard of Kegel exercises. Have you generally no, no, heard of those? Is that, is that Kegel? Yes, Kegel exercises specifically for strengthening those muscles, being able to have mm -hmm. the organs be up where they're supposed to be, uh, preventing urinary incontinence. And uh, it's just a wonderful way for women in particular to be aware of structures and to specifically strengthen those muscles. Mm, yeah. And it doesn't have to be done on any type of specific schedule. Sometimes I've advised patients, okay, you're driving, if you're driving around much, if you're at a red light, just hold, squeeze and hold and strengthen those muscles. All right. Mm. And also just general overall muscle tone. So mm. being overall in a fit uh, condition is also going to be very helpful. What about dietary, oh. uh, dietary issues? Not specific. Only to the point of not eating the standard American diet and eating a diet that is conducive to uh, hopefully not being overweight, uh, not being excessively overweight, mm. that is definitely going to help the cause. So, but other than that, whatever people eat in their diet that helps them maintain fitness and muscle strength, that's also going to help the pelvic floor. Sure. Mm. Well, Great information. Thank you for clearing that up for me. I am now more informed than ever. This is great. Thank you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.